This conference will now be recorded. Good afternoon and a warm, warm welcome to all the attendees today. I would like to welcome our today's speaker, Dr. Abhishek Mathur, and all the attendees for today's webinar. After the session is over, a feedback form link will be shared with you in the chat box, upon feeling of which you will receive the certificate of attendance. Now, I would like to introduce you all to our guest speaker, Dr. Abhishek Mathur. I like to meet my dear. Dr. Mathur is a global general manager, R&D, QCQA in Pratishtha Industries Limited, Telangana. He is PhD in biochemistry from National Institute of Malaria Research, BHEL, Haridwar, Uttarakhand, and awarded from Jivaji University, Gwalior, India. He has total experience of almost 18.5 years in the field of natural molecules and phytochemicals related to their food, pharmacological, and agricultural activities. He strongly believes that natural molecules are the future for tomorrow, thus his scientific work emphasizes the importance of novel molecules, microbes, enzymes, and secondary metabolites for human and agricultural significance. His expertise is in the field broadly categorized as natural science, microbial technology, environment, agriculture, nanobiotechnology. Dr. Mathur recently received Eminent Scientist Award by Society of Plant Research, Vegetos, felicitated in an international conference held in Puducherry University, Puducherry. He has been placed in top two person scientists in the country and amongst the researchers in world rankings via AD Scientific Index. He has been recognized as best scientist working in the field of food and agricultural biotechnology from Jivaji University and one of the best researcher in Asia working on PGPRs and natural molecules. He has more than 110 research publications in international, national, referred, and peer-reviewed journals to his credit with more than 1,000 citations globally. He has filed three patents on technologies regarding solid waste management, waste water recycling, and fermentation waste. Really sorry, sir. And fermentation boosters for molasses industry and biocide for cane juice and milk sanitation in his industry research career. He has three books published in his account, also authored two technical chapters in a research-based book published by Uttarakhand Council of Science and Technology, Dehradun, India, and Springer, Netherlands. He has presented his work research work in the form of technical, oral, and poster in more than 14 national and international conferences. He has supervised more than 100 plus students for dissertation project work. He is, an, he is acting as a reviewer and member in editorial board of peer reviewed journals indexed with Elsevier, Thomson Reuters, and Scopus. In addition to many other awards that he received, he has also received Gem of Asia International Excellence Award by ARTP, New Delhi in Bangkok, Thailand in February 2019. He has recognized, he was recognized by Young Scientist Award by Uttarakhand Council of Science and Technology, Almora. Now, I would request Dr. Abhishek Mathur to take over. Over, over to you, Dr. Abhishek Mathur. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you for inviting me for deliberation. So, good afternoon, all of the students. So, uh, here another 15 20 minutes will be valuable, very much valuable for you, as I will be speaking on the role of different kinds of rhizobacteria. Uh, promoting the plant growth and resistance, acquiring resistance against pathogens and pests in wetting crops. Emphasis on uh, preparation nanoformulations. So being a researcher, 
uh, when uh, we came across by uh, different kinds of uh, natural existence the god has given us the almighty has given us that we are exploring as a scientist as a researcher and day by day in the day by day research we we try, we try to identify the lot of the possibilities that can be beneficial for the human being so in terms of agriculture there are different kinds of beneficial bacteria which are residing in the rhizospheric region of the soil and this rhizospheric region is basically having the cluster of the teamwork of different kinds of bacteria the teamwork of uh, different kinds of beneficial bacteria basically which are basically promoting the growth of the crops and also uh, developing uh, the resistance on the crops against uh, different kinds of pathogens and pest invading the uh, the crops from the soil or from the environment so uh, when we uh, identify these kinds of bacteria these kinds of network of bacteria at that time we are always in a tendency to identify and explore different kinds of metabolites as well so because these organisms are valuable in nature they are residing the rhizospheric region where the root cap is available root uh, the root of the crop is available and there is a community of the beneficial bacteria which are anyhow promote uh, releasing some enzymes and metabolites that promote the growth of the crops as well as acquiring the resistance in the soil uh, in the crops uh, against different kinds of pathogens so uh, uh, my uh, topic is basically illustrating on such kinds of beneficial bacteria which are known as rhizos bacteria so broadly it is basically categorized as uh, it was categorized as uh, like uh, plant growth plant growth promoting microbes so plant growth promoting microbes are having different kinds of bacteria which are basically positively inducing the growth of the crops okay so before that uh, the terminology was named as pgpms but later on it was de described that the that the, rhizo, that the rhizospheric region where the root of the crop is available there most of the organisms are basically bacteria in nature so they are broadly classified as a rhizobacteria it's not like that the bacteria is only as coming in the rhizospheric region but also the fungus the good fungi also are available so when we uh, uh, listen a, a word bacteria or a fungi we understand that that lot of pathogenicity or any kind of infections may be uh, in maybe into the picture uh, which 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 can be spread by these organisms but dear friends these bacteria are I, like these bacteria can be beneficial also we already know about different kinds of probiotics which are uh, available in the food we are we used to have curd and uh, yogurt and other kinds of food items where the different kinds of probiotics are used different kinds of beneficial bacteria are used so similarly is the case for agriculture as well there are also some beneficial bacteria which are inducing the growth of the crops and also acquire and also develops a resistance against different kinds of stresses and different kinds of uh, pathogens within the crops so my topic is just to explore the organisms what all organisms are beneficial for the agriculture and how to develop the uh, beautiful combinations by using their metabolites and their uh, different enzymes for and to develop the nano formulations out of it so why nanotechnology what is nanotechnology we know the manipulation of the materials and the systems into a specific size which are very small in size and this is small size particles are having a specific system which can and easily enter uh, enters within the system and can uh, do wonderful activities now dear friends where nanotechnology is not there nanotechnology is everywhere everywhere in the different branches of sciences in the, in the environment in the food in the textile in the uh, like uh, different biology process different chemicals so there everywhere the nanotechnology is in, ex in existence even the sanitizers what are you using right now that are also uh, sometimes nanotechnology based so what is nano a particle which is very small in size that is up to 500 nanometer or less than 100 nanometer in any of the mode so god has given the almighty has given us different kinds of nano sized materials in the nature what uh, these uh, nano sized materials uh, or living beings are uh, available and they are basically doing their work but uh, human made things are there which the human beings are making making and they are useful for the utility they are useful for the society they are useful for the applications different kinds of applications 
the nanotechnology is in existence. So this is a, just a, a diagram where, where, where which we can understand the natural nanotechnology is in existence of for agriculture, bioremediation, waste removal, medicines, cosmetics, uh, developing of innovative nanomaterials. Uh, and like uh, different kinds of systems, the nanotechnology is in use. Even for bioremediation, soil waste management, and wastewater treatment, also nanotechnology is having a significant role. So nanotechnology and using of the nanoparticles, the preparation of nanoparticles are like not by single method. They are also developed by different kinds of methods, like physical, chemical, biological, and different hybrid methods are available, which synthesizes the nanoparticles. Okay, so uh, we know that the physical and the chemical process are not useful for the nature because anyhow they leave some kinds of toxic elements in the nature which can be easily which can be available from years to years generation to generation and they can easily harmful uh, uh, available for harmful making the uh, harm to the health and uh, also to uh, can uh, generate different complexities in the metabolic system of uh, the living beings. So why not we use the biological processes to develop the nanoparticles? When we discuss about the biological process, it means the processes which are using the enzymes, which are using the metabolites, which are using the plants, extracts, or which are using the microbes as such uh, for synthesizing the nanoparticles. So these uh, nanoparticles, nan biological based nanoparticles prepared are reliable, non-toxic, and they are eco-friendly methods for the nanoparticles and they are of utmost importance to expand their biomedical applications. One of the options to achieve this goal is to use the plant extracts or microorganism to synthesize the nanoparticle. Now coming again to the rhizosphere region, the region where the root of the crop is available, there the different communities are residing, the different microbial communities are residing and they are basically a nitrogen bacteria, phosphorus solubilizing bacteria, potash mobilizing bacteria, and different kinds of phosphorus solubilizing bacteria and iron sulfur zinc mobilizing bacteria fungicidal agents etc etc which are basically the microbial communities which are residing as a teamwork in the rhizosphere region so these are residing and they are basically the heroes in the zero budget natural farming so pgprs they have different role they are they not only they are uh, having the significant in the growth promotion but also they have antagonistic properties like fungicidal action as well as different kinds of uh, actions against the pest and uh, different kinds of insects and uh, pathogens. So in the nature as well, when the crop is grown, so the crop root is uh, releasing some molecules, which is basically, which is basically attracted by the PGPR. And they, they enhances the uh, uh, growth productivity. So uh, there are different kinds of plant uh, microbe interactions, microbe to microbe plant interactions, where different kind of microorganisms, not only they are intercommunicating with each other, but also they are intercommunicating uh, with the crop roots, where the re re signal molecules are released. These signal molecules or the growth factors are the nutrition factors for the growth of the organism. And also they form a significant network in the crop roots, which uh, enhances the productivity. So, besides enhancement of the productivity, enhancement of the growth, they also acquire uh, different kinds of resistance. So, this kind of resistance are induced systemic resistance and systemic acquired resistance in the crops, which are basically induced in the crops in the lifetime. So, different kinds of resistance mechanisms are basically Hello? activated because. Yeah, am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. So someone is uh, asking hello, like hello, hello, they are asking. So, so anyway, uh, the systemic uh, resistance and acquired resistance uh, gets activated in the crops and they basically uh, induces different kinds of uh, enzymes and uh, different kinds of antagonistic molecules also, which are responsible for the antagonistic action in the uh, crops so the crops can acquire resistance against different kinds of pathogens invading onto it so uh, these these naturally based uh, signal molecules and the metabolites released by the 
PGPRs or the rhizobatria form a kind of biological nanoparticle network that enhances the productivity of the crops. So uh, the PGPRs have uh, different functions on the basis of functions. They can be distributed into different category on the basis of activities. They are also into different categories. Even like now coming to the PGPR specifically, they are a mycorrhiza. Mycorrhiza, myco means uh, fungus. Rhiza is standing for its roots. So they forms an interconnection network within the roots of the crops. They are also the good PGPRs and they forms they are, uh, their spores and the propagules are uh, having a strong activity uh, to enhance the crop uh, uh, vegetative growth of the crops and also induces the phosphate solubilization in the complex deposits available in the soil. So these are mycorrhiza and uh, uh, they also they forms an interconnection between the roots. So the, basically it is meant that one jungle created from uh, uh, so many miles uh, uh, so that is connected with the another jungle or another forest which is basically because of the mycorrhiza so uh, like this kind of uh, role the mycorrhiza plays into an uh, in agriculture so if suppose we isolate and export these my kind of microbes we can definitely uh, form a specific good fertilizer and also we can study their metabolites and their spores so that their growth promoting activity or their hormones or the kind of different wonder molecules released by them can be utilized for developing of some nano formulations. So this is a picture where you can see there is a different interconnection of the fibrous root, a connection of the root, uh, a network of root, which is basically root colonization by vesicular or vascular mycorrhiza, and they are having a strong activity. And there are different other PGPRs also. It is not about the VAM. It is not about the vesicular or vascular mycorrhiza. It is about the different kinds of strains also which uh, forms the pgprs network like uh, there are bacillus subtilis there are pseudomonas fluorescence strains there are bacillus mycoides and there are actinomycetes members so like all these strains are the good pgprs so uh, dear friends it is not like that the, the rhizosphere region is always having a good community of the microbial network but also having a pathogenic potential microbes so we have to identify, we have to identify and explore that which kind of microbes are pathogenic, which kinds of microbes are basically PGPRs, can be categorized in the PGPRs. So there are different assays, there are different characteristics where we can identify that which strains are basically PGPR, plant growth promoting rhizobatria, and which strains are basically pathogenic in nature. So definitely which strains which are not pathogenic, they are positive PGPRs and they are also, they are having the capability to have a profound effect on the growth of the crops. So this is an observation sheet where we, we have tested different kinds of uh, PGPR strains on uh, some crops and we found that uh, there is an effective uh, height uh, elongation and there's a number of leaves gets induced, the roots, root length gets also induced and there is no yellowing, no yellowing appearance in the crops when affected, uh, treated by such PGPRs. So this you can see that uh, we have tested these kinds of PGPRs. And you can see the microfibrous pattern of the roots. So there are, as I mentioned, that there that these PGPRs are not only uh, affecting the growth of the crops, but also having antagonistic potential. They are also fungicidal in nature. They are also pesticidal in nature, insecticidal in nature. So these photographs are just showing that uh, some uh, some PGPRs are beneficial for fungicidal activity. You can see that this photograph is having a uh, the PGPR strain and it is controlling the growth of this kind of fungus. This is a pathogenic fungus. Similarly, here you can see this is a path, uh, bacterial strain, a uh, bacterial strain which is basically a PGPR strain and is not allowing the growth of the fungus to grow in the plate. So, like all these things, these all uh, uh, isolates we have identified and we have tested uh, for the fungicidal activities. Besides, uh, the, when, when we uh, recall as the word as antagonistic, it means every activity which is, uh, which is uh, related to the fungicidal action, which is related to the pesticidal action or insecticidal action comes into an existence. There are some fungi also, there are some good PGPRs in the form of fungi, which are basically growing on the insect's body, insect's cuticle. They are entomopathogenic fungi. They are basically metamerism, NSFLA, Pesilomyces lidaceus, what is helium licani, all this Beveria basiana. So you can see that uh, this kind of uh, fungi is uh, busting the uh, exoskeleton of the insect and is growing on the body of the insect like this.
you can see this grasshoppers uh, affected with the fungi uh, endomopathogenic fungi these white flies are also affected with the fungi and uh, when uh, this fungi grows on the body of that uh, uh, fungi uh, insects so these are endomopathogenic so they uh, kills the insect and they damage the insects body and they grows uh, beautifully on the insects body now how to explore uh, these uh, pgprs and their metabolites for the mass multiplication so we have to identify that which pgprs are beneficial in nature and how the good P uh, metabolites they are producing so there is definitely for mass multiplication there is always a process of fermentation i'm a fermentation scientist so i believe that uh, uh, we have to understand the carbon nitrogen ratio the specific nutrients can be applied to the crops as well as in the fermentation which can be beneficial for the growth of the suitable microbes so when we when we isolate and explore the properties of these microbes at the time we also understand at the same time that how we will explore these microbes in a beautiful way so to identify to to uh, release out their metabolites in a beautiful way to develop some formulations or to develop some products so metabolites produced by fermentation like we have different beneficial microbes like pgprs when we produce uh, when we grow in the suitable nutrient medium at that time it goes at a specific ph and temperature on the shaker or in the fermenter it is able to produce its microbial metabolites we know that these microbial metabolites are primary metabolites and secondary metabolites and the primary metabolites are much more effective for the growth of the organism itself as well as for us also like amino acids proteins phytohormones polypeptides natural molecules and all and we just basically when we uh, produce these metabolites then we assay for the growth regulatory activity the vegetative and reproductive activity reproductive activity means like flowering the food formation root colonization activity the shoot elongation activity and if and any kind of attribute like insecticidal or pesticide activities are there or not so when we explore these microbes when we grows in uh, when we make a slant and then we make a pure we make a pure culture then make a slant and then we store it for uh, uh, at minus 20 to 4 degree celsius in the glycerol stock like that and then we basically mass multiply in the larger scale suppose you have to produce 1000 liters of the bio fertilizer 1000 liters of the microbial formulation or 10000 liters of micro formulation you cannot go into the lab scale lab scale is a very small scale where you can do only the seed cultures there only you can increase the microbial quantity microbial density and then you can you can take it to the larger scale fermenters you can, in this picture you can see that there is a slants you are making as broth you are making you are taking it to the small flask then to the big flask and then uh, these cultures are multiplying and then to the commercial scale fermenter where you are producing in the large amount and then this particular microbes at particular count this can be dispatched to the farmers so this is about just uh, taking the microorganism and making a uh, uh, developing a fertilizer out of it and then giving to the farmers but when we are when we are developing uh, uh, the my uh, this uh, formulations at that time we have to concentrate we have to identify that you have to use the specific microorganism or you have to use the metabolites out of it so this you, these pictures you can see that uh, these are the pilot scale for fermentation capacity wherein the uh, there is a carboys where you can uh, in the control condition you can uh, uh, take it to the 50 liters or 100 liters or 1000 liters or more than that you can take it to the big uh, commercial fermenters so when we uh, develop a liquid fertilizer that the technology is basically so much fermentation technology uh, definitely there is another technology known as solid state fermentation where you can grow the organism into the solid scale solid uh, solid media okay in the large scale and then you can develop a carrier formulations so this uh, these photographs you can see of this are the mycorrhiza which are growing in a solid state agar this is our trichoderma which is growing in the lawn uh, in the track this is a trichoderma lawn you can see the trichoderma trichoderma vinidi and arzianum strains that are growing in the solid media this is about the pasilomyces lilicious this is another entomopathogenic fungi which is growing in the solid media this is about Bavaria basiana. This is another uh, entomopathogenic fungi which is uh, killing the larvas, which is beneficial for larvas and uh, this uh, different kinds of insects, mites, ticks, and uh, aphids. Uh, this is going in a solid state fermentation media. Then now we understand that yeah, these microorganisms are suitable. The metabolites are effective. Now we uh, as these microorganisms are effective, so we can explore out the metabolites and then we can develop some nano formulations. 
so nano particles nano molecules new combination next gen strategies i mean to say 4n strategy that is n and 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 for nano particles natural molecules new combinations next gen so because there is a need there are, today there is a need uh, first of all the farmers should be benefited benefited by these particular kind of formulations and they could that can be easily available can be easily reciprocated that can be easily commercialized that can be easily uh, that can be of low cost first first thing most important thing second thing is that that the, this these formulations should be very effective very uh, meaningful so that it can be utilized in uh, uh, they can be multiplied it can be utilized in uh, uh, new combinations can be utilized as uh, new combinations and uh, natural molecules can be utilized so that uh, they can produce some worth effects so as i have mentioned that the biological i have selected the biological technology for preparation of nanoparticles and i must suggest the biotechnology is more effective so because it do not relieve release any kind of uh, toxic impurities toxic uh, residues in the environment in the beneficial so this is a just a, a flow diagram of uh, just to understand how the nanoparticles are produced by the biological extracts so i suppose i am growing some organism and i am producing some enzyme these enzymes are acting acting as a capping agent they convert the metallic salts into metal nanoparticles and these metal metal nanoparticles are utilized for the formulations this is just a flow chart how the nanoparticles are produced so like all these things so this is about a trichoderma few silver nanoparticle uh, we have i produced we are from trichoderma we have produced some metabolites we have uh, 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 taken out the solvent extracts and then we have uh, identified we have uh, purified the compounds from trichoderma and then we have fused with the silver silveric particles silver ions to develop the nanoparticles that are basically trichoderma silver fused nanoparticles we have identified the size that was a scanning electron microscopy and uh, that is a 20 nanometer uh, and we have identified uh, from well diffusion methods we have identified the fungicidal activities also this is about the bavaria basiana fused uh -huh. the same thing we have done the bavaria basiana was grown and the metabolites were produced these metabolites were screened and identified and then these metabolites were used for preparation of nanoparticles basically silver fused nanoparticles and we have tested on uh, different larvas and uh, different uh, caterpillars this is about the different kinds of natural molecules like curcumin uh, that is from uh, uh, haldi that is known as uh, uh, curcuma longa and uh, chitosan that is uh, that is uh, abundantly found in uh, the digestive skeleton of this uh, prawns and crabs so these are both miraculous molecules we have developed a technology to prepare the nanoparticles uh, based of curcumin and chitosan and these were having significant activity on uh, uh, against the fungus and like uh, also they are found to be fruitful against the different kinds of insects and pests so this is about the fungicidal activities of curcumin to uh, chitosan nanoparticles This is about the silica nano particles. Silica, we know that silica is an, another abundant molecule. Uh, like cellulose, silica is another abundant molecule which is uh, not only abundant in nature but also available in the plant uh, plants. So develop, they provides uh, strength and rigidity. They act as a defense system against insects, pests, and also improves water balance, plant growth, and yield rate of photosynthesis production. So we have tested the silica. We have extracted all the silica from rice husk. And then we have prepared the silica nanoparticles, and then we have tested on the white flies on the brindle crop. And uh, this is a cotton ballworm where we have tested uh, the silica nanocomposite, and we found uh, significant uh, uh, activities uh, on these larvas and these uh, pests. This is a photograph where we have shown that uh, it is not only in the, uh, affecting the uh, regulation of the white flies. But also significantly have profound effect on the growth of the brinjal crop. So you can see the number of shoots appearance, branches, height, leaf areas, number of flowers, and all these things. This is on white flies population. Different concentrations, different volumes of silica nanocomposites were tested on white flies attacking the brinjal crop. This is about the fungicidal activity of the silica nanocomposites on different fungus. You can see these are the wells. Where the silica nanocomposites were introduced in different concentration, 
and uh, these are the fungus the fungus were basically inoculated in the center of the plate and it was allowed to grow in the petri dextrose agar so you can see that uh, no fungus no pathogen no pathogenic fungus is able to grow on the complete plate because the different nanoparticles different concentration of nanoparticles of silica nanocomposites were basically introduced in it and it was uh, deeply embedded in the agar and it was allowing the growth of uh, uh, it was uh, uh, stopping the growth of inhibiting the growth of these pathogens you can see this also we are doing a lot of work on detoxification of different chemicals and pesticides we know that from the past era uh, people and farmers are basically in a use for using this kind of chemical fertilizers this chemical agents which are basically chemical pesticides and insecticides as well which are also deteriorating the soil health the soil health is getting deteriorated because there were beneficial bacteria as i already indicated that there are best beneficial community residing in the rice soil region if suppose you give the proper nutrition to the crops these beneficial community also grows properly and they enhances the growth of the crops they have a significant effect on the growth of the crops like that so uh, our studies also suggest that uh, like we have also identified different kinds of uh, biological uh, releasing from the uh, different pgprs which are having profound effectivity on detoxification of these chemicals and they are uh, detoxifying the chemical residues using uh, we have used different pgprs pgprs uh, based formulations as well as the pgpr consortia we understand we also uh, we also check that the single bacteria if suppose single bacteria is giving a good result another bacteria is also there which is also giving a result so is it there is a possibility that, uh, that suppose these two bacteria or more bacteria can be introduced in a single formulation can be can have more effect uh, activity uh, in the terms of like what kind of activities we require so there may be a possibility so like at the time uh, when we screen all these pgprs and we develop the consortial formulation we have to identify that there in the formulation there should be one more uh, one or two more bacteria or three four more bacteria so we identify that there is a compatibility between these strains or not if there is a compatibility it means they can be mixed they together they can be utilized in a single formulation and can be utilized for detoxification so nanotechnology we understand that yeah nanotechnology is uh, very helpful and uh, it can uh, create milestones but nowadays but uh, still now in india uh, like we are uh, we are not using the nanotechnology concepts uh, so prevalently because there are no nanotechnology rules in agriculture but now, but government is now also come into the action that they have take, they have understood they have understood that uh, this kind of revolution is getting on and different researchers across the globe are working upon and they have identified that the nanotechnology can also be utilized but they can be that the potential should, risk should be addressed properly so nanoparticles in the environment uh, since if it is a biological nanoparticle I, I must say that these are not having any kinds of toxic effects they can they cannot cause any deleterious effects in the human system or the human body or the animals uh, grazing these crops so definitely uh, uh, for the biologicals they are not much risk but definitely we have to understand that how much concentration and uh, for how much time these nanoparticles can uh, adjust and adhere to the crop system and can have a profound activity we should have we should use the formulations in such a way that the, these nano formulations can end enter easily in the crop system so that uh, the proper metabolic activities in the crop system can also easily uh, affect and can enhance so that uh, the crops can have uh, significant growth and also uh, they can also have strong activity against uh, these fung fungal pathogens and insects and pests uh, invading the pathogens and the crops so <clears throat> although still uh, uh, misconceptions are also always there and also that we don't have to ignore the health issues and uh, the environmental issues also so before developing such kind of uh, nanoparticle system we have to understand all the uh, activities all the things uh, associated with the nanoparticles and then only we can we should contribute in the uh, formulations so this is all about my lecture so here i am associated with the different bodies as a life member as a fellow member uh, Recently, I have been uh, uh, categorized in the top two percent scientists among the world in agriculture biotechnology, and uh, time to time, uh, with all of your wishes, uh, I've been uh, awarded with uh, different for my different researches and contributions to the society. So this is all about all these things. So thank you for your patience.
just wanted to tell you all dear students that uh, this is a high time for you now and uh, you must concentrate on your studies effectively although your uh, faculties are giving you uh, you make it, making you more uh, effective and uh, more trained definitely we as industrialists also need trained manpower uh, and pratishta industries are basically are uh, uh, always motivating the youngsters and uh, they are always wanted the, the new people to join come and join and be a part of the team and uh, also we are having different unique uh, concepts like uh, we are also funding the phd programs we are also funding we are also giving our pilot plant uh, facilities if suppose any one of yours have uh, having some idea and you want to develop some technology so we you can always come to us you can write to us and uh, you can write to me and uh, we can give you the technology if suppose technology is viable definitely we can provide you the platform and uh, you can uh, develop your things here validate here uh, we have good farms also we can make your products tested also and uh, also uh, like uh, suppose you want to commercialize it also we can also uh, uh, helpful i am helpful for you and uh, also we uh, we are inviting the good students for the Uh, this uh, training projects and uh, different kinds of programs also but uh, with that uh, mou has to be done uh, with uh, your organization and like this so devasri madam is always there uh, for you uh, she is the person i think uh, who is helping you out in uh, such kind of uh, um, part of this kind of deliberations and uh, thank you madam uh, thank you for uh, inviting me once again and uh, all the best to youngsters Thank you so much. God bless you. हेलो हेलो मैडम यस सर या माय लेक्चर इज कंप्लीटेड मैम होप माय ड्यूरिंग माय लेक्चर द वॉइस वाज क्लियर एंड माय स्लाइड्स वर विजिबल यस सर इट वाज एब्सोल्युटली विजिबल एंड क्लियर एंड नाउ द स्टूडेंट्स इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस यू मे आस्क सर okay so i think the students are completely clear about your topic so thank you uh, dr abhishek mathur for giving your valuable time in speaking in today's webinar and today's webinar was really encouraging and motivating for all of us to know more about the topic and i on behalf of the whole science work team really appreciate and thank you for your speech thank you so much sir thank you sir thank you